All right, good evening. Today is Monday, July 2nd, 2019. Uh, welcome to the Sweet Talk. I am your host, Kim Matina. Uh, I am a Google certified trainer and a gold product expert in the Google for Education, CS First, and Jamboard Help Forum. And I'm a technology teacher. And today, well, first, I want to say happy summer for people that have off and are enjoying their summer break here in the United States. Happy summer. Keep learning because that's when we start thinking about, you know, things that we want to do and implement for September. So get, you know, recharge your batteries and then try to try to get into some type of professional development. Um, but anyway, um, I am so happy to have on my show today um, another international guest, and she's from Cyprus, and her name is Antig Antigone Parax Parax Maxi, right? Did I say exactly. it right? <laughs> I did say it right. Okay. And um, I've met her on Twitter, and we've been going back and forth on Twitter um, a few times. So I invited her to be on the show, and she's going to be going over um, Google Expeditions and Tour Creator in the classroom. So welcome to the show. Hi, Kim, and thank you so much for the invitation. It's been a long time that we're trying to uh, arrange this, and I'm really happy to join today. Same here. I'm glad that we finally connected. It's nice to finally see you in person and not yeah. like your, your little icon in Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so um, I'm um, working here in Cyprus uh, at the Cyprus University of Technology and more specifically at the, I'm a postdoctoral researcher at the Cyprus Interaction Lab. Uh, working in topics related to technology enhanced uh, learning, human computer interaction, and computer assisted language learning. Uh, and at the same time, I'm also um, a language instructor at the Language Center of the university, where um, I um, strongly apply uh, all the technology, uh, uh, let's say, um, things that I enjoy with uh, my students, uh, trying to make them more enthusiastic in uh, the learning process. So that's interesting um, because most of my guests that I have on the show are usually like K-12 educators and it's, and you're one of the few that can bring some type of, um, opinion or feedback or expertise at the college level or university level. So it's nice to know that these tools um, that we all use in K-12 can be used at, you know, um, the college level as well. So I know you wanted to um, talk about Google Expeditions and Tour Creator and how you're implementing that. Um, so what so why don't you walk us through like really what let's take us back to the basics like so what is google expeditions and what is tour creator and how do you actually get started and get your students excited about it okay so um uh, the um, uh let's say the initial uh spark to start working with these tools is that uh, um uh, I saw a lot of advertisement, let's say, in Twitter, started exploring with those tools. And um, recently we had at the university uh, a group of students coming from uh, Kenya and Uganda um, uh, trying to study uh, Greek language for one year and then to join uh, the uh, nursing program of the university. So the aim was for the students first to get to know the language um, so that they can, uh, let's say, meet their needs in, in, a, in an interpersonal, let's say, level, but on a higher level to also meet their needs in an academic level so that they can um, uh, be able to study nursing. So uh, Google Expeditions came at hand because it enabled us to give the, to the students the opportunity to see topics related to nursing um, from a really close side and engage with the language 
in a more lively way. So uh, when students had to um, learn the language related to um, uh, to the human anatomy, to the respirational system, to um, how children are born, uh, uh, Google Expeditions gave us the, the visual needed for those students to understand what is it uh, in our body and what language is needed in order to explain um, uh, and uh, construct the knowledge uh, and the language behind those systems. So did you take your students, so these are students that want to study to be a nurse or in the medical field and you use Google Expeditions to make their learning experience more immersive. So you took them on VR tours or AR tours, like, so give us an example. I know you said the rest, of them. so what type of, like, so what type of tours did you go on? Like, were there, um, I know there's tours available um, for AR as well, because I've done the um, the VR and the AR for um, health students and in the middle school where I am. So I know exactly what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And I think it's wonderful that you were able to take that tour and, and apply it to that level where, and I did the same thing in middle school. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a universal, it's a universal language really, right? Indeed. So and what did, so give us an example of what you, um, what you did for it, for like a VR tour. So a VR tour is what, what, how do you explain to the kids what virtual reality is? So, um, first of all, those students had, no knowledge of virtual reality or augmented reality. We used um, only virtual reality uh, for the specific group. So initially we had to uh, um, explain them why we're using the specific technology, why it's helpful. Um, initially we used some more, uh, let's say, um, familiar um, expeditions with them so that they get to know um, places that they are already familiar, let's say the jungle or places where they have already seen uh, and they got really excited with them and at the next stage uh, we used um, uh, the first expedition that we used is the one that explains uh, how um, uh, conce conception takes place and how um, uh, an embryo is being uh, developed from uh, zero to uh, 40 weeks. So um, uh, as you know, Google Expeditions is only available in, uh, in English. So uh, they were already familiar with the language, uh, the English language, but but we wanted them to uh, elaborate and being able to um, use Greek language to explain what they have seen. So instead of um, uh, uh, being able to see and talk over in English, uh, we as instructors, we uh, explained them the, what they were looking at in Greek. So we had to make a preparation ahead of so that we are able to um, uh, provide the information in Greek. And then the students had to uh, work in groups and uh, create uh, a form of a presentation or um, uh, let's say an artifact that was related with the experience that they had um, lived in uh, virtual reality. So you held the students accountable by having them create a presentation and and explain their learning through that. Yes. Okay. So uh, we wanted them at the end to be um, uh, more constructors and creators of their knowledge, not just passive receivers of what they had uh, received uh, in uh, in expeditions. And that's. That's a great quote we, that you said 
that you wanted them to be creators and not just receivers. Like that's what it's all about is to try to make the learning experience immersive and then give them, put the, put the responsibility of their learning back on them so that exactly. they, can, they can be engaged and create and, and um, communicate with their partners and, and learn those vital skills. I, that's amazing. Now, what, now did you have, um, when you did this with your students, did you have different stations set up with different parts of um, the, you know, the lesson or was everybody using the same expedition? No, uh, everyone was using the same expedition. It, it, it was a small group, so it helped us keep uh, the same group, being at the same place at the same time, and then moving on to the next step, the next phase, all together. Okay. All right. And then, so after you did that, that was just the VR tour. So then they went back and then they created their um, their work and their presentation. And then how did you implement did you did you implement an ar tour as well no we didn't implement an ar tour uh what students were encouraged to do is to when they created their presentation was to revisit the expedition um not guided but only as viewers uh, in order to revisit the information um see again um uh, the um, scenes that they have visited so that they are able to uh, create a more um, complete presentation, let's say, of their experience. Um, let me share um, my screen, uh, Kim, uh, uh, just to show you um, what can you see my screen? Yeah, I can see your screen. Okay. So, um, uh, this is a, um, a part of um, uh, this, what I have explained before has been uh, published in um, uh, 2017 in uh, Human Computer Interaction Conference. So, uh, this is an overview of the benefits that have been shared by our students. Uh, and can be classified, uh, as you can see, into four categories. Initially, students um, were able to share concepts and ideas that were initially abstract to them, but through their experience into uh, virtual reality, those abstract ideas became more tangible and more concrete uh, to them. Uh, communication was facilitated through the virtual reality, um, uh, not only between the guide and the um, uh, and the, the uh, students, but also between the students as they uh, ex exchange question and information uh, during the expedition. Um, they afforded to visit an environment that is authentic, so they, they uh, sense the need to learn more about nursing, about health-related uh, issues, since it was the, um, the concept of their future studies. And it gave, it gave them a, a spark to share their experiences as well. And that exploration led them to uh, become active constructors of an artifact that, again, was uh, meaningful and uh, was shareable with the group and also with the community of the university. So overall, virtual reality was not um, uh, just a, um, let's say, a component of the lesson. It was uh, all the lesson, um, both from a, a language perspective and from a, uh, let's say, um, um concept perspective important to them and I, I like that you what you said at the end that they you know they had to share an artifact which which um was shared amongst the university so i feel like when students 
have to um, present to a broader audience. They, they take more pride in their work. And it sounds like that's what you did too, right? Yes. Uh, not only they, they are more proud, they found it more meaningful to invest time and uh, work on a, um, uh, on a project that it's not just because the instructor told us to do, but because it's meaningful to what we're going to do as uh, future nurses. So um, the idea behind was that th they take the role of not a student, but of a practitioner, of a, uh, of a researcher or of a, um, of a nurse that will get into the process of explaining to a patient or to a relative about the health condition that he or she is going through. So uh, the use of language was not, um, uh, let's say, a, um, fill in the blank or um, match the word with another word. It, uh, um, uh, the aim was for students to produce language uh, in, in, a, in a complete uh, context and a complete situation. Yeah, I, I think I think you hit it right on. I think you, you're dead on with it. <laughs> I, I really like that slide a lot um, because it, it does support everything that you just explained, but it breaks it down to why it's important. Exactly. And uh, what, what it is, uh, I think what is important to, to note here is that um, Google Expeditions now, it's, uh, it's really expanding with, uh, with Tool Creator and supports, especially what I have mentioned before related to construction and um, giving to students opportunities to be active constructors of their knowledge. So, um, uh, tool Creator comes in to enable uh, students not to participate in, a, in an expedition that is given uh, by the instructor or decided by the instructor, but to create an expedition and navigate through uh, images and places that uh, they find interesting and uh, um, exciting to them. Yeah, so what are you going to talk about now? So, um, uh, Tool Creator uh, is uh, one of the projects that we are currently working on since it gives us the opportunity to build uh, tools uh, quite easily. So, what we need is an image that is 360 and the application. So, um, I'm going to give you just an example of how uh, we have used it. Um, so, working on uh, the tool creator is quite easy. Um, you will have, of course, all the links and the presentation available uh, in your site. So, um, as you get started uh, into um, tool creator, uh, students can create their own tools and navigate their fellow students uh, into an expedition. So um, by clicking on new tool and uh, by creating a tool, um, and if you are signed in with the same Google account uh, with your Google Expeditions, you can uh, become an Expeditions creator. So i um, just going very quickly into how uh, you can create um, a tour in uh, Tour Creator. Uh, so I've just given a, a title to uh, my expedition. It's called Limassol. It's my home city. So the concept here is that uh, a newcomer in Limassol, a new student that arrives in, uh, in Cyprus, uh, we start navigating around the city and needs to get to know uh, the place, uh, the um, um, uh, being able, first of all, to navigate around. So um, being given the opportunity to uh, go through and uh, construct those experiences, let's say, 
uh, allows him or her to get to know the, that place even better. So uh, what we have got, done with our students is uh, uh, to uh, give them opportunities to guide us through the new city through their eyes. So um, I'm going to navigate you through the Limassol Marina uh, by um, not by importing my own photos, but by using photos that are already available in uh, uh, in Google Maps. So Limassol Marina is one of the um, famous places here in in Limassol. I can add a scene and. At the same time, I can navigate around into 360. I can uh, give a title to my scene, and at the same time, add point of in point of interest. Let's say I can add a point of interest here related to private jets. I'm using English, but in the case of uh, our students, I would use Greek so that I can help them and enable them to uh, talk uh, about the city using the target language rather than uh, English, or I can use both English and Greek. I can describe um, any point of interest that I add add if I want a, another picture or I can uh, add uh, also a narration. So this scene can then become, uh, if it's published in poly, let's say publicly, it can become uh, an expedition that is navigatable by the um, students into the classroom through Google Expeditions again. Right, or they can actually, if they wanted to, they can uh, view the tour through the poly link that you just, mm -hmm. yeah, that you just did. Yes. Now, so when, so you, you have your students use Tour Creator and use the 360 images from Street View. Do they want to go out and find pictures um, with their own camera or using, you know, the cardboard camera or maybe a 360 degree camera? Do they do they have that type of um, desire to do that or are they OK using the pictures that are in the street view? Hey, this semester we only used uh, the pictures from the street view mainly due to uh, time restrictions. But yes, students express interest to bring their own um, point of view because street, street view will bring into um, pictures from one point of view. But for students, let's say Limassol Marina is not that important. They have their own experiences and their own view of the city and they would like to get to a more let's say, um, familiarize or uh, more personalized um, view of the city and a description of the city from their eyes, not from a, a third person's eyes. Right. So in the future, yes, uh, uh, we aim at um, uh, using 360 images and uh, import them into Tube Creator and add that element into uh, into the course. So how? So was this the first time that you used Tor Creator with your students? Yes, that so was the first time. And what did you think of them being um, able to pick up on it? Was it too hard for them? Too easy? Did you have to really go over the application with them? Did they it adapt easily? Uh, easier than I expected. They cut it up quite instantly. So we, uh, uh, it took us just five minutes to go into the uh, link and um, the, 
the whole process is quite self self explanatory because of the um, easy um, and user user friendly um, uh, navigation of the true creator. So one thing I want to um, just say for the audience is that, um, you know, we talk about Google Expeditions. We know Google Expeditions is available uh, as an app um, through the Apple Store or the Google Play Store. But now Google Expeditions is available on um, Chrome books that are enabled um, to, the, to the Android App Store or the Google Play Store. So you can actually run Google Expeditions through a, an, an enabled Chromebook device that can access the Google Play Store. All you have to do is download Google Expeditions to that Chromebook. And students don't need to have a mobile device now. They can actually use their Chromebook as long as it's Android app enabled. So that update is huge. That just came out. Um, they announced that in, at ISTE um, last week in Philadelphia. And that's a huge, huge, huge benefit. Because now we're we're having students be immersive on Chromebooks that they don't and they don't need a tablet or a mobile phone. Um, so to me, I think I'm really excited about that. Indeed. And then even in Tor Creator, one thing I want to mention also in Tor Creator, you don't need an app to use Tor Creator. It's all web based. So mm -hmm. all you have to do is go to I think it's vr.torcreator.google.com. Mm -hmm. and um, access tour creator and create a tour and you'll be able to access your tour and view your tour in google expedition if that's what you if that's what you want it to do um, so tour creator is another great tool to use with students to um, for presentation and like you said to give them a different perspective or their own perspective on different tours or different landmarks or different cities or places that they've gone. So it's, it's given them their own perspective. That's, that was, that was great. I'm, I'm, I'm so glad that you were able to be on today. Was, was there anything else that you wanted to share in your presentation? Or uh, I think I've covered everything. The link in the presentation is also shared with everyone. So you can uh, see it in the uh, sweet talk. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that one slide that you had with all of your points on why VR and AR was beneficial, and I'm going to download that as a, spe a separate image, and I'm just going to post that in the Wakelet collection on its by itself because I really oh. think that that was an important slide that supports why we do what we do. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, like, I, I, I'm so happy that you came on and, and it was so nice to hear how you're using the same technology that K-12 teachers are using and you're using it at the university level for, for mm -hmm. students who are, who are studying nursing. So I, I think there's so much opportunity for everyone. And this is just a perfect example of, of how you're doing it. So thank mm -hmm. you for being on. And thank I, you for the invitation, Kim. No, thank you. And honestly, like I've the the health teacher in my school did the same one with um, um, the embryo and how it how it grows in the womb and how it develops. And she did. If you check out the AR tours, there was augmented reality tours mm -hmm. I think, for like the skeletal system or um, which was pretty cool, too. I don't know. She did it. And that's how I knew. So. <laughs> But it, it, it's good, though. It's it's nice to see that that we are all using these tools at different levels, but they're yeah. all connecting the students with the same content. So, mm -hmm. well, I really appreciate you being on. I know you said it's the middle of the night there in Cyprus, and I wish you would have told me because <laughs> you could have rescheduled it sooner <laughs> or later. But um, thanks for being on. I hope that thank you, you very much, Kim. I just want to share my screen really quick so I can show people where everything is. Um, all right, so you can see my screen, right? You see yourself? Mm -hmm. Okay, so, and I was trying to tweet while we were doing this and I just, you were just talking about so many good things I couldn't tweet and listen at the same time. Sometimes mm -hmm. I can't multitask. Um, so you can visit the sweettalk.com, that's the S-U-I-T-E talk.com. And um, 
today's episode will be on the homepage here at, at, in addition to the podcast. But if you scroll through, um, you can actually go down. And if you would like to be a guest on my show, please fill out this form here and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Right now I'm scheduling for the fall, um, which is awesome. Uh, if you want to, um, you know, subscribe to my YouTube channel or podcast, all the links are here on the homepage. Uh, also the episodes and podcast list. If you missed one and you wanted to catch up, you can go to the episode and podcast list page and find any um, past episode with the show notes here, which is, which are Wakelet collections. So today's Wakelet collection is right here. It's posted on my website and it's episode 80 and all of the resources that um, were mentioned are included in this collection. So that's basically tonight's show it was all about tour creator and Google Expeditions and how um, she's using it at the university and, and how she's actually using it to make students be held accountable by having them um, create a presentation and public, public and present it publicly to uh, people in the university. And they were, and and I can't say your name again. So tell me again. Antigone <laughs> was um, stressing about language and language barriers and how she wanted the students to really like translate everything that they're learning into Greek. So that was uh, important too. But what I would suggest also is to um, leave the team feedback on having um, other languages available for Google Expeditions because um, you're not the only one that um, that had mentioned that um, to me. So I would I would tell you to leave the team feedback because they're always reading um, feedback from teachers and they're always trying to improve their products. So leave the team feedback, even if you're you know teaching Spanish and you want Spanish um, in your tours, leave the team feedback. Give them all the feedback you can. Um, but that concludes our show tonight. So um, if you have any questions, um, you can reach Antigone um, through Twitter or her email address. Um, you can reach her and contact her if you like. Um, but that concludes our show. Thank you again for being on. I really appreciate it. It was so nice to meet you. Thank you very much, Kim. Thank you. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.